All right, let's go ahead and get started. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Stephanie Melvin. I'm your, the Director of Alumni Relations at Trinity. We also have Alessandra Birding, who's the Associate Director of Programs and Services for Alumni Relations. Tonight's presentation is Make a Lasting Impression. Uh, before we I introduce our speaker, just a reminder, we will be recording this session. You will receive the link to the recording um, session when it is available. Usually takes about a week, week and a half. Also, you will get a copy of the presentation. Uh, we, will serve, we will send you a survey link. Once you fill out that survey link, you will receive a copy of the presentation. You are all muted so that we minimize the background noise, but also if you need to ask a question, you can use the chat box. Just go ahead and type in your question throughout the presentation. And at the end, we'll go ahead and open it up and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, give Courtney those questions. Um, tonight's speaker is Courtney Ray O'Neill, Trinity alumna class of 2013, is a communication strategist and media contributor. She is also a thought leader on global fashion, showing positive imagery that is informative and goes beyond color lines. She says, style is not just about what we wear, style transcends, transcends what we wear into how we approach others or function. Courtney's career began in politics, working behind the scenes where she picked up real world experience and developed insights about personal branding and public engagement. Serving as the executive producer of a daily lifestyle, lifestyle show is what sets her apart as a go-to for all things media relations and business matters. Courtney is also the founder of Corded, an image consulting firm that provides image consultation through traditional communication support, creative direction, and personal styling services. Courtney, thank you so much for doing this for us. And guess what? The floor is yours. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. And thank you, Trinity Washington University for having me. I'm honored to be here with you this evening. And let's get started. So making a lasting impression. What does that mean? Communication style. Next slide. What if I told you that you could increase your value by 50% just through investing in your communications? Would you do it? I think we all want to increase our value by 50%. My name is Courtney O'Neill, and I'm a proud alumna of Trinity Washington University, class of 2013. As mentioned, I'm a communication strategist, a media contributor, and also the founder of a company named Corded. Tonight, we are going to talk about communication style. Next slide. What is communications? It's a dance. It's a dance between words, next slide, words, uh, imagery, and power. Let's set some ground rules. Everyone has a brand and everybody has style. What you do with those sets you apart from everybody else. Next slide. Again, communications, what is it? It's a dance. It's a dance between words, imagery, and power. So let's break down the elements of communication style. You have linguistics, tone, and voice. Now linguistics, everything that is said must be said a certain way. Tone develops a rapport, creates a relationship with someone, and voice allows us to be seen and heard. I'm gonna go over each of these in various ways and talk about do's and don'ts. Slide. Linguistics. So everything that is said must be said a certain way, right? So that might refer to a phrase we commonly hear. It's not what you said, but how you said it. So here's some phrases to avoid when you're speaking, especially in an interview. I don't know. I personally struggle with leading sentences sometimes like this. If someone asks me a question, it's a weird pattern to get into. And I, I ask you, please try to avoid it. If someone is asking you a question about a particular subject or topic, guess what? It's because you do know, you know the answer. 
So avoid saying, I don't know. Next, sorry. Avoid apologizing for no reason. A lot of times I hear women doing this and I'm not sure where it comes from, but apologizing for no reason, it's a confusing space to be in, especially for the person that received the apology. And also it's a power play. You're giving power to the other person for no reason. If something does go wrong, it's your moral or personal decision to apologize. But again, when you see people that don't apologize, think about power in that situation. Slide. Mr. President, and I, I want to add, really but if, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. I have to I'm wait speaking. It. So this was a soundbite heard around the world. We have Vice President Kamala Harris in the vice presidential debate with former Vice President Mike Pence. This is an example of tone and tone, quite frankly, gone bad. The reason why is now we talk about tone creating a rapport and a relationship. We think of tone often as the speed in which we speak, how excited we are when we talk about something, but it also allows us to show deference and respect to the other person. In this situation, the former vice president set a tone for the relationship with our current vice president Harris, meaning the interruptions that went on record so showcase a lack of respect to her during that conversation. Now let's talk about voice. Together, me, that's who, who do I trust? Me. So voice, we often talk about active voice versus passive voice. And typically we think about this in our writing. But in this case, we wanna think about it in terms of our speech. Gender often plays a role in this space, and I'm gonna tell you why. Studies show that women tend to downplay their certainty, whereas men tend to downplay their doubt. I'm gonna say that again. Studies show that women tend to downplay their certainty, whereas men tend to downplay their doubt. So what that means in an interview is, active voice would be, I secured eight new clients for this company last year. Passive voice would be, we secured eight new clients for this company last year. Oftentimes you'll hear men take credit for the project or the wins, whereas women tend to say, we did this all together. When you're in an interview, you wanna showcase your accomplishments and talk about the things that you did, because again, you're in the room for a reason. Now let's talk about style. What is style? Style is your voice. It is how you communicate externally to the world. And it's also an opportunity to showcase your fashion. When these two things come together, communications and fashion or style, guess what happens? Slide. You have now a power tool. Communication style is your power tool. The way that you communicate with the outside world, as well as yourself, becomes your power tool. Next slide. In the face of great challenges this year, Americans showed incredible grit, strength, tenacity, and resolve. And together we achieved truly historic victories like nobody ever thought possible. Okay, so we have President Trump here, right? And you might think, why are we talking about President Trump and style? But guess what? Remember what I said in the beginning, everyone has style and everybody has a brand. President Trump's brand is signature with his red tie and his speech. He did everything the best. The United States of America is the best. We are known in the world for doing everything great. That is his presidential power and his style. Next. Not use Cumexa if you have certain medical conditions. Cumexa may cause new or worsening urinary retention, problems with controlling your body temperature, and blurred vision. Call your doctor to find out if Cumexa is right for you. For all the moments, for love, forever, find the perfect peace for whoever you've fallen for. Only at K. 
Right now, Drunk Planet Fitness for just $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment. So you don't even have to try and squeeze a gym into your apartment. Planet Fitness, leave the gym to us. <laughs> okay, so here's an anchor from Fox 5 DC showcasing her anchor voice and this confidence in which she speaks on any subject matter. I'm pointing this out to you because anchors, news reporters are some of the best examples of how to invoke confidence in anything that you're discussing. No matter if the information is wrong or right, if you notice, they speak with confidence. And the way that they do that is how they inflect their tone, the manner in which they conduct themselves, meaning they speak from the diaphragm. They don't talk in baby voice. They don't look down. They look directly at the person on the other side of that camera, which is you, and they share the information. Now let's talk about when we put all of these things together and more about your fashion. Guess what? The color choices that you wear have meaning behind them. Now let's get into a little bit more detail. So here's a color wheel that's often used in marketing spaces and you can digest this later to see what the psychology is behind colors and how they impress upon us when we see them. But let's all go over some ground rules as it relates to business and colors. Black is not the standard color in business for men. Shades of gray and blue are. Now going back to red, who as we mentioned before, implicates power. It suggests assertiveness. When we see that color red, we think, whoo, that person must be in charge. Blue, it conducts a feeling of trust. It makes us feel comfortable and safe. Gray and beige, however, create neutrality. Think about those choices when you're putting on your clothes for that next interview or meeting. Pink, peach, Anything leaning more warm also suggests that you're approachable. So accents are important. Next slide. Now, what to wear. That's probably why a lot of you are here. You thought we were talking about just fashion and style. Let's get into some more of the details. Companies do say they will scale up the program if it is successful, guys. Very cool. We love it, Will. Thank you. Okay, so we're all living our lives on camera right now, right? The biggest question, to wear pants or not to wear pants? The answer is absolutely yes. Here is a, a national reporter caught with his pants down. And why? Because the camera caught it in frame. We're going to go over a little bit more details about what is important to know on camera. Right now, mind over matter is crucial. Work from home dress codes have relaxed tremendously, making an office space, whether you're going in person or working on camera, casual. But guess what? That rule does not apply to you. Be professional at all times. The, these are some outfit choices that you can possibly choose to wear for both men and women and color palettes that work consistently throughout the year. Investing in yourself in this way, in your style, in your brand, will carry you throughout your career. Next slide. Now your camera ready. Let's talk about it. On camera, the camera reveals everything. Know that number one. So if you think that that little fly on the wall or weird piece of trash that was hanging in the background was going to be missed guess what somebody's probably going to see it because the camera usually shows everything so let's talk about some do's and don'ts know your audience while you may have organizations and political affiliations and such on your resume think about that again as it relates to your background you don't maybe want to showcase that when you're in an interview, depending on who you're interviewing with. Eye contact. Look directly into that camera and speak to the person on the other side of the screen. You want to make a connection that is lasting. Moisturize. Now, guys, I'm actually talking to you on this one. Believe it or not, you need to moisturize. And the reason for that is, again, the camera shows everything. If you had a bad night, 
you stayed up too late, you got too much sun, or guess what? Even being on camera like this day to day does affect our skin. So think about moisturizer. Now let's talk about setup. Avoid backlighting. When you have too much light coming in from behind you, you become a shadow. And guess what? We wanna see you. Position the camera in front of you so that you are looking again directly head on. It doesn't look like you're looking here, there, wherever, distracted. Limit your noise and other distractions in the room so that you don't have interruptions. Now, lastly, let's talk about hair. This is always a topic that goes back and forth. It's a personal choice, but if you have a hairstyle that works for you and you're not distracted by it, wear your hair that way. However, if you tend to play with your hair and do different things, wear it tied back. Next slide. Now, final thoughts. The secret weapon to your style is you. Regardless of what you put on, how you practice <laughs> for the next day, again, the reason why you're in the room is because of you. So remember that you have to invoke and embody that self-confidence. Have that conversation with yourself before you get in front of that interviewer and know that you are the secret weapon. Any questions? Thank you everybody for this opportunity to speak with you tonight. And you can keep up with me on social media or connect on LinkedIn. Now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then we're gonna just go ahead and see what questions we might have. Okay. Um, Stephanie is monitoring the questions and it looks like she accidentally muted herself. So give me one moment. No problem. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> There we go. All right, folks. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box and we'll make sure Courtney gets them. I have a question for you, Courtney. Yes, ma'am. When you talk about, you know, how one is supposed to look on camera, you know, a professional and everything, but what if you don't have a lot of money? You know, how do you put together an outfit or wardrobe when you know that your resources are, you know, kind of limited? Absolutely. So, if you don't have things already in your closet, some staples like a simple dress, like we showcased earlier, or a nice, clean, crisp shirt, business shirt, think about some of your local retailers um, or maybe fast fashion retailers where you can style yourself on a budget. I can't tell you how many times I went to Zara or H&M throughout my professional development um, because I was not being paid to look the part, so to speak. Um, the thing that is important, however, with whether you're shopping in your closet or shopping somewhere that's uh, a fast fashion brand, picking something that is gonna last you. So don't just buy for trends, buy for forever, to be honest. Okay. Would you recommend maybe, I don't know, thrift stores, consignment shops or stuff like that to maybe That's pick up? That's also a great option. Thrifting isn't for everybody, but if you um, are open to it and have the time to just go and check out your local Goodwill or um, Salvation Army, I mean, uh, there's tons of great thrift stores that are on even a higher end um, in DC, Maryland, or in wherever you're tuning in from that you could definitely shop from and you'd be amazed what you find. Okay. Um, we do have a question from Bree. She wants to know how can we use style to show personality, um, obviously professionally, how would, how would we do that? Sure, so I think that goes back into the accents. You know, let's just say, look at what I have on right now. I commented on the fact that beige or gray, um, excuse me, beige or white usually demonstrates a neutral uh, response, but I decided to wear red or a higher color lipstick. And that was how I'm showing my personality. You can do that with your shoes. You could wear prints, you could wear a color, but you want to keep in terms of a professional setting. And I'm not saying day to day, I'm speaking just in terms of your interview. Um, 
keep things at balance. And that I think goes on into the day and day to day. Cleavage, no cleavage, <laughs> you know, um, colors in terms of your ties, gentlemen, or stripes, you know, all of those different options that you have out there. Do you just want to keep a balance so that you're not, again, too loud? Because sometimes drawing um, certain attention to yourself may not be a good thing. Absolutely. What about makeup for women? I mean, you know, we, we, we're all in the Zoom era, okay? Let's face it, the pandemic has changed everything. Everything literally is almost being done online. How should women um, use makeup to help enhance them? Because we're always told about filters, ring lights, uh, as you mentioned, uh, backlighting and stuff. How should women really prepare themselves as they get ready for an interview or even a team meeting so that they look like themselves and not somebody who's washed out or just a bit overdone? <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. I mean, today, for instance, just again, using myself as, as an example, or think about the people that we see on air every day. They have on makeup, okay? Working from home, or even some people day to day don't want to do that. So moisturizer is an option. You can use the filter settings on your Zoom or conference meeting setups. It's amazing how good it works. <laughs> it's like social media filters. It changes the entire uh, outlook <laughs> on your on your face um, and then lighting you know you want to have lighting so that you don't look so um, dim quite frankly I mean lighting really is a game changer and I'm not saying invest in a ring light but you can you know adjust the lighting in your room so that it's not so dark um, or take the shade off of your lamp so that you just have a little bit more light focused on you uh, you know, put on some chapstick, put on a little tinted uh, lip gloss, or what's been very popular right now is tinted moisturizer. Instead of wearing foundation, wear a tinted moisturizer. Okay. Um, another question has come in. For folks that don't subscribe to just the two genders, what style tips do you have? Uh, well, again, style is about you. So it goes back to comfortability. And what that looks like is a personal choice. I think that style, it truly is non-gender uh, binding. It's something we've seen transition from, if you think about history, kilts to men wearing skirts. And what does that mean, <laughs> you know? Um, it means nothing uh, only to that person who's wearing it. If they feel great in the look, then have at it. Uh, for a professional setting, again, you have to wear what makes you feel good. And I think that that is the bottom line of this message. Have a conversation with yourself. The communication starts within. So what makes me feel good? I feel good putting on my tinted moisturizer and adding a lip color. I don't necessarily have to put on a blazer and a full on suit, but guess what? When you get dressed every day, it honestly changes your mindset. You don't feel so schleppy. And when you're in an interview setting, you feel that much more empowered. So again, do what works best for you. Okay. Um, another question came in from Nico. What if you're not into makeup? If you're not into makeup, there are tons of great moisturizers and they give you a glow that it has almost the same impact as makeup. Okay. How can, another question's come in, how can someone start to build a personal style? You know, where should you begin in doing that? I'd say start with your staples. So if we're looking at from day to day to important uh, milestone moments in our lives, Everybody needs, in my opinion, a suit. Something, a go-to outfit for when you have a big meeting, you have something like this going on, a big presentation. You know, you need one of those go-to uh, looks in your closet for women or for folks that like to wear dresses, let me be clear. I recommend dr dresses because they're very giving as far as weight gain. So you keep them in your closet for a very long time. And uh, for guys, again, with the palette, you wanna pick things that, you don't wanna go with the trend per se. You wanna pick things that 
last forever. Think about the brands that have been around for ages. Their style's consistent. It's classic. That's for a reason. Recognizing, again, fast fashion is fun. It's cool. It's hip. It's trendy. But guess what? It's out of style like that. In three months, you're going to want something else from that store. So go for some things that are going to last you a long time. If you have questions about that, like that wasn't very clear, I I'll try to explain a little bit better. Okay. Now, do you recommend that people, you know, somewhat practice a bit um, before they do an interview or talking to someone professionally on Zoom is to like look at themselves in the mirror? I mean, you would think that this would be obvious, but sometimes, and I have seen it <laughs> in other Zoom meetings that I have done where someone just comes in and I'm thinking to myself, did you not check your teeth? Did you not, you know, comb your hair or something like that, you know? Or just, you know, get in front of the camera yourself and then just kind of practice and be prepared. Absolutely. I think that if you are unfamiliar with this on-camera lifestyle that we're living, it's important to sit down. I always, before I'm having a meeting or an interview, will sit down and turn that camera on a little bit earlier than my start time. And if, if it's even... Uh, a conversation that, you know, I feel unfamiliar with. Um, like you said, you practice your talking points. Remember who your audience is. So this is your time to shine. What did you accomplish? What are you trying to share with that particular person on the other end of the lens? When you're sitting on camera, again, you want to think about all the other things that are around you. Oh my gosh, I forgot that this statue is here or that poster is here this book, whatever. You wanna think about those things sometimes because again, it might not be what your message you're trying to convey to the other party uh, about yourself. So think about those things and when you're in the moment, it's too late to correct it. Okay. Yeah, um, well, oh, go ahead, Stephanie. I'm sorry, uh, Lolita wants to know where they can find you on social media and LinkedIn. Sure, you can follow me at Courted Style, C-O-U-R-T-E-D Style on social media. And you can find me on LinkedIn using my first and last name. Okay. And what's one last bit of advice you want to give to everybody before we leave? Um, I think I just want to remind folks again. So just as in working in an organization or for a company, corporate America, you name it, it's important that your message aligns. Your message should align internally and externally. So the person that you're trying to show to the world needs to align. You need to align in here and you need to align out there. So whatever you're trying to show as your brand and your style, make sure that you feel good about it because that is what I'm telling you is your secret weapon, your self-confidence. Good advice. <laughs> Thank you. I had one super quick question for you, Courtney. Sure. Um, I know I struggled with this a lot and still do struggle sometimes um, when going into new rooms. If you're doing an interview or something like that, whether it be on Zoom or in person, and you're not sure what that particular uh, company's dress code is, or is it casual? Is everyone in a five-piece suit? Um, and you're not sure is, do you have advice on what you should wear to an interview when you don't know that company culture um, or, or on a first interview or just not really sure um, how everyone will be dressed in that interview or in the office? Right, that's a great question. Uh, I think that goes back to industry. Every industry, every uh, culture, community, they all have a style that goes with them. Um, and more direct A to B is every community or, or uh, organization or institution has its own culture. So keep that in mind. Silicon Valley, for instance, the tech industry tends to be a little bit more relaxed. Does that necessarily mean, again, in an interview that you should approach your conversation that way in terms of how you present yourself? I don't personally agree with that. I think it's fine for that person on the other end because guess what, they're in the job, you're applying for it. However, if you are you know, looking at um, 
Capitol Hill, that's another space. Capitol Hill is tends to be very conservative. They're loosening their reins a bit in terms of men being able to wear facial hair and so forth, but it tends to be a conservative environment. And the way that you express yourself is very limited. Color would be one of them. So know your audience in that way. Just survey the room, so to speak, by doing a little bit of research. Okay. Uh, we have another question. Can you say the quote one more time when women are more prone to and more men are, are, are more to? It had something to do with confidence and asserting what you did using the word I instead of we. Right. So when we were speaking about voice, we often think about voice in terms of active versus passive. And usually that's referring to our writing styles. I did versus I am. However, in this case, we want to think about it in terms of I did or I secured versus we did, we secured. And where gender comes into play here is that women tend to downplay their certainty, whereas men tend to downplay their doubt. So we use Tony Montana as an example of where he did everything. He created the organization and he only trusts himself. That's an extreme example, but it's showing how someone uses power to show their accomplishments, speak to the confidence that you should have in them and doesn't give credit to anybody else but themselves. Hmm, okay. All right, I don't see any more questions coming in. Okay. Um, just a reminder to everyone again we already have, we are recording this presentation so anything that you've missed we will certainly send you um, a link to that probably in the next week or a week and a half um, also you will get a copy of the presentation but it does come with a caveat you have to fill out a survey you have to let us know what you want to see in future presentations and programs and then you'll get a copy of the presentation I do want to thank Courtney so much for joining us tonight to do this presentation. It was fantastic. It's really a lot of good advice. Um, she's obviously someone who has the background and knows what she's talking about. So at any time, you're more than welcome. We will give you her contact information. She did give you her social media. Um, so you're welcome to follow her and also you know, follow up with her with any more questions um, that you may have. And Courtney will also be joining our event on March 29th. So if anyone would like to join our event, then we'll also be joined by two other Trinity alums, um, alumni, and um, we are going to be doing an entrepreneurship panel. So if you're inter interested in entrepreneurship, Courtney will also be attending that um, event as a speaker as well. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, everybody, for attending. All right. Thank you, all. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. With that... Everyone have a great evening.